It's been a long time since I've talked about the absolute state of Honkai. And right now we actually have a problem where everything new is good and meta. That might not sound like a problem to you, but it makes investing in Valkyries extremely difficult. In this game, you really cannot make your choices based on how much damage a Valkyrie does. It just doesn't work that way. In fact, there are situations where the higher damage Valkyrie cannot even compete. That is actually because we have something called the weather system in Honkai, which is completely designed for certain Valkyries to dominate. Every new Valkyrie gets an exclusive weather, maybe even two or three. This basically guarantees every new Valkyrie will be useful. It also makes it near impossible to give a fair recommendation because you're basically predicting what MiHoYo will throw at us. Anyway, I'm just going to do my best to give you guys recommendations to what I think is probably the best approach. So let's start off our discussion with the farmable Valkyries. First we have the expedition type Valkyries. Now these Valkyries you cannot get through any means other than your stamina. Most of the farmable Valkyries these days can be bought with Astrite or Pins which are much faster but these ones you have to go in for the long haul. Now here are all of the stamina expedition type Valkyries that I recommend farming. Now the reason why I'm not discussing them in detail is because actually they've all become quite niche in the end game now. This is more to prepare you for the situation in which you might need them in the future. The fourth throw here which are the old meta Valkyries can be used as damage dealers for when you literally have nothing else they are sufficient. The next set of Valkyries that we can talk about are even more time gated which are the S ranks that you can farm with ancient willpowers. Primarily, we'll talk about Fervent Tempo Delta, which is the strongest damage dealer before level 80. For the early game, you just need to pair her with Drev Kometa and an Imperasaurus, and she'll do very good damage. In the end game, she has an extremely high usage rate on the double S bosses in Memorial Arena. So any veterans that really care about Memorial obviously want to get her to triple S. But if Memorial's not your thing, definitely leave her at double S, because her use outside of Memorial is very low. Twilight Paladin is another Valkyrie you can consider. She is the only Willpower Valkyrie that's viable in Abyss. The reason being is she got a huge buff with the pre-arm that she got. Now the problem with the pre-arm is that it's only available after level 80 which means you can't really make use of Twilight Paladin before level 80. You also need her actual weapon Hikate Somber to make use of her but it is a pretty easy weapon to get. It is in the battle pass right now and by the time it's gone it'll be in the exchange shop. So she's essentially a free meta unit. Regarding her rank I mostly recommend just to stop at double S for most players. Triple S obviously better but it's really only needed for the Nirvana players. Her bosses are predicted to not show up as often as they did in the past and farming other dorm valkyries might be better for your account. Phoenix is another valkyrie you can consider who has the opposite problem of Twilight Paladin. She can support any elemental team which is helpful for you very early on when you don't have very many valkyries. However, you do need to keep in mind she is very weak in the end game and is very rarely used. Of course, the last Valkyrie to mention is Lightning Empress. She is the Memorial Queen because of her leader skill. She is always a good option. And that pretty much does it for the Willpower Valkyries. You should be focusing on unlocking most of them just for the Dorm bonuses. Phoenix and Moonbeam mostly fell off, but they're more useful than the others, so you can farm them first. Overall, Willpower Valkyries aren't as impactful as they were in the past, so it is okay if you mess up. But there is something that does matter if you mess up, and of course, we're talking about the Crystal Allocation. First off, we have the most uncontested Valkyrie. It's the Hirsch of Sentience, of course. There's pretty much no shot any other Valkyrie has any semblance of an importance as this one. Pretty much physical teams are required to have her. Her debuffs are just significantly better than anything else, and the older impair sources are very dated. The Hirsch of Sentience has debuffs that last a lot longer, and they also apply on enemies that pop up again, so she doesn't have to switch back in. On top of this, she does a ton of damage off-field. She can apply new debuffs off-field as well. She has the strongest gather in the entire game. She has the strongest impair in the game, which literally carries a true multiplier to all of your damage. Basically, it can't be diluted. She also provides your team with a lot of SP, which is extremely important. I think one of the better selling points, especially for new players, is that she can work as a main DPS as well. But due to how the weather system works, this doesn't happen very often in the end game. The point is the Hirsch of Sentience is so useful that she can actually be used in almost any team. You can't really mess her up, so she's a fantastic starting option as well. Next up, we have Azure Imperia. Now, in the past, I have dogged on her a little bit, and the reason why is because Azure Imperia genuinely feels really terrible to use without her gear. On top of the fact that she had zero memorial presence back then, it basically meant you could delay her for a bit. However, now things have changed a lot. First of all, her gear is farmable. 
which is huge. With the introduction of Triple S bosses, she's gotten a lot more use in Memorial Arena as well. And of course, we have the question of whether or not she is approaching retirement. And to answer that, uh, it's pretty clear to me that Mihoyo is at least starting to attempt to try to push her out. However, at the bare minimum, she's going to stay in Fire Teams because nothing really comes close to her there. AE will eventually be a free Valkyrie, but even in that future, AE is almost certainly still going to be useful. It's going to take a long time, and Azure Imperia is just extremely inexpensive. The only thing you really need to worry about is getting her gloves. Now her gloves have been obtainable in a variety of different ways, but she definitely needs her gloves because it's a lot harder to use her without them. It is worth it though, her gloves are literally one of the best weapons in the entire game. One of the only ones that are used in multiple Valkyries as well. Basically, if you want to play competitively, you definitely need an Azure Imperia invested. So rounding out the top of our list here, we have the two Fu Hoas with a major focus on their weapons. So the Nebulous weapon is actually used on both, so do try and get that one first. Anyway, if you thought the rest of this chart would be filled out, you'd be wrong. You literally cannot rank anything past this point. Anyone who's played this game long enough knows how hard it is to actually give a good recommendation after these two. From here, you'll actually have to decide what kind of team you want to make. For right now, in Honkai, we have four major teams, which are the Fire Team, the Ice Team, the Lightning Team, and the Physical Team. Personally, I recommend focusing in on one specific team at a time, otherwise you will get overwhelmed. Basically, what I'm trying to say is stop chasing every new Valkyrie and just focus in on fully gearing one team. That's the probably the best idea. And of course, which of the four teams should you start building first? And is there anything you should consider going out of your way for? Well, most people would actually point you at this point to the newest Hersher. However, right now is actually a terrible time to do that. Hersher bias is a real thing in this game, and let me just explain it a bit. Usually in about July or August, we always get a new Hersher. Now, the Hersher is always the top of their respective team for the entire year, which is actually way longer than most Valkyries these days. So for longevity reasons, it's actually a very smart idea to go for the Hersher of the year. Since 2019, they've been designed to be very universally used, which means they're helpful in pretty much all game modes, and they're pretty much recommended for players of all spending levels as well. However, as a caveat, it seems that Mihoyo does know this, and it seems that their weather will come up the least in Abyss. At least that's what I've noticed so far. End game players can definitely take note of that. The general player at prediction is that the new Hersher will be in version 5.9, which is about two patches away. Of course, that could be wrong. Anything could happen, and they could break the pattern. Let's talk about something that's not a Hersher. Let me tell you about something that actually separates the pros from the Joes. And of course, that is the SP Equipment Banner. If you don't really know what to pull on, this is pretty much always going to be a good thing for your account. This banner comes out with new A-rank supports, though we won't count Eden since hers is farmable. One of the best ways to power spike a specific team is to get the A-rank support gear. This is support impacts third after all. Most of the power of teams is actually the support stigmata. DPS stigmata is fairly minor in comparison. The banner itself also has the best rates in the game, so you'll always complete the set much sooner than any other banner. This should not deter you from actually finishing a team though, this is just a good starting point. Basically, always keep your eye out on those banners with a 30 drop guarantee. Those are always a very good starting point to building a team. Speaking of teams, let's start talking about the teams one by one. First off, we have the physical teams. The physical teams are, of course, led by the Hersher of Sentience, but then we have our supports. So for our physical supports, we have two major ones, which are Carol, Pepper, and Starlet Astrologos. So between the two of these, it's become apparent to me that Carol is the much stronger option. In most cases, Carol just outperforms, and sometimes she doesn't even really need her gear to do that. And for certain bosses, the difference between the two is actually massive. The reason for that may be because of the shield breaking capabilities from Carol, or just because of the fact that Starlet Astrologos takes a long time to farm SP. Though Starlet Astrologos may actually perform better earlier on, this is because Carol actually provides no crit rate to the team. You have a lot of access to crit rate in the end game, but in the early game, your crit rate is just dog water. Older damage dealers actually have less crit rate, so Starlet Astral Ghost actually does have some use in the end game as well. And nowadays, the Shui Jing set is now not worth pursuing anymore. Still a very good Stigmata set, but not worth using your crystals on. Depending on your situation, you may want to farm both, but do be careful. So of course, after the two physical supports, we have the many physical DPSs to talk about. Of course, the cheapest and most cost-effective damage dealer is the Hersher of Sentience, which we've talked about before. In that case, you'd use a triple support team with both Carol and Starlet Astrologos. Effective, but will lag behind any boss that's not a Psychic. Still good enough for the average player, though. But of course, we have very many physical damage dealers, so let's talk about them one by one. So starting off, we can talk about Alicia. Now, Alicia is the strongest physical range Psychic damage dealer. Yes, I know that's a lot of qualifiers. 
Alicia's roles are incredibly unique, and because of that, her bosses are pretty much uncontested. Because her stigmata is farmable, it's actually quite easy to fully gear her. The biggest problem, really, is I don't really suggest pulling for the bow. Uh, it's much better to obtain it through something like a battle pass or something. Because these stigmata are farmable, it can be a waste. And although her damage is really high, I don't think she'll have favored boss treatment for the future. Basically, to sum it up, her bow is not a must pull, but if you can get it affordably, she's definitely worth raising, and you could actually prepare for that if you want. Next we have Equinox, which is the newest Valkyrie in the game. She is the only imaginary S rank in the entire game, and I'm willing to bet that's probably going to stay true for a long time. The problem with it is that her advantage on imaginary bosses is kind of extreme. But if you want to talk about her actual DPS, it's pretty much in line with most of the other physical damage dealers, so she will actually lose on other physical weathers. But definitely her biggest selling point is her ability to do imaginary bosses. I think for right now, just because of that selling point, she is the go-to physical DPS. We don't really have a good alternative like we did with Quantum a long time ago. It is worth noting that on top of being very good on imaginary bosses, she's actually very strong in general in Memorial Arena. She's very quick burst damage, which is very good for the mode. Now let's talk about Bright Knight, who is the oldest gadget a DPS that is viable in Abyss. So as of right now, we have had a lot of events where we've more easily been able to rank her up or just obtain her straight up. If you haven't gotten her already, investing crystals into the Valkyrie supply is probably not the best idea. She also is in close competition with Twilight Paladin, who is farmable, but Bright Knight has a quicker path to viability depending on the deals that you're offered. So if you're able to get the Abyss Flower, you can actually use her and actually skip the investment on Twilight Paladin, and she'll be sufficient for most players at just S rank. Otherwise, older players can compete with their Twilight Paladin. Just keep in mind that her bosses might not show up that often. And that is all of the physical damage dealers. You might have noticed that all of them are within their own niche, and that is definitely on purpose. For right now, we'll say that Equinox is the favored choice since she is the most recent. She also has the largest advantage in her niche. Next, let's talk about fire teams. Fire team cements Azure Imperia as the baseline, but then we have the two supports which are Rondo and Raven. Now the situation between these two is actually fairly unique. First, Rondo can actually be preferred due to her ability to ignite, as well as her high hit count that can be effective on the Rhyme Star Shield. In contrast, Raven is a lot harder to play, but with her on the team, the damage is significantly higher. However, the reality of the situation is Raven is significantly more expensive than Rondo. Rondo is basically completely free, and on top of that, she is very easy to play. So it makes sense for the majority of the player base to use Rondo while cutting costs. My general recommendation is just to use Rondo until you feel like your fire team is too weak to retain, then Raven can be a good investment. The other thing to keep in mind is that Rondo only works with her pre-arm, which is available after level 80, so before then you pretty much only have Raven as an option. That pretty much sums up our discussion on the fire supports, let's talk about the damage dealers next. First we have the Hersher Flame Scion. Definitely a fan favorite, but not a must-have like some would have you believe. She definitely has the highest fire DPS in the game. She also has very high memorial demand. Now the problem with her is she actually has no ability to ignite, and Raven also has no ability to ignite. So what ends up happening is because there is a literal weather for igniting, she ends up losing that weather to other fire damage dealers. But still, her damage is very high, and with a well-built team, she can be used in a variety of different weathers, so she is the primary selection for your fire damage DPS. Next, let's talk about the new Rita. Now the new Rita is actually given out for free in version 5.5, and actually her damage is very respectable. It is on par with all of the other Valkyries in the game. The main thing that holds her back is she doesn't really have many bosses that she is the best on. Unlike most new Valkyries, she didn't actually get any new bosses made for her, and I am not sure if that will ever change. However, that doesn't really stop her from having very good damage. On top of the fact that she actually does have some bosses that she is the best in, she's essentially a meta unit that was given out for free. The biggest problem with her is she's obviously meant to be a version 5.5 Valkyrie with the deals that were offered. If you already skipped the insane deal in version 5.5, let's be real, you're probably not going to pull on it later. But even with free gear, maybe she is a decent copium option in Red Lotus and below. And because she's very clearly meant to be a free option, she's very likely going to be more obtainable, likely more deals in the future. Next Next we have Dea Ancora, who is the newest Valkyrie without time stop, which at this point is kind of ancient, but she is still holding her weight. Now a lot of that is because of her ability to ignite, which actually comes from her top stigmata, not her actual kit. And take special note of that because that is basically the reason why she's able to use Raven and not just skip out on Rondo. Her damage is actually falling behind, and she is slowly losing bosses, but they did just give her another one in Memorial Arena. It's likely that the status quo will actually remain for about 3 to 5 months, so she's still going to be good for that period of time. And the reason why is because I don't see them going crazy with new fire damage dealers until about August, or a bit after that. 
So definitely not recommended for any new players, but a consideration for any Dolphins out there. And that pretty much finishes all the fire team lineups. Overall, not too complicated, and I don't think it'll change too much in the next few months, but I could be wrong. Moving on from fire teams, we can talk about lightning teams. Now, very much like fire teams, we can use Azure Imperia as the baseline for lightning teams. But keep in mind, this is only true for Abyss, and the easier content you're fighting, the less true this becomes. In more squishy content, you may prefer to use both of the lightning supports, which we will talk about right now. So the two lightning supports are Fischl and Fallen Rosemary. Comparing these two is actually quite difficult. As one of the few players who skipped Zenyi in Nirvana Abyss, I feel like I have the most nuanced knowledge on this topic. Rosemary is only a little bit better in speed and SP regeneration. Those two aspects are actually very important for her because she is able to punch above her weight. Fischl, on the other hand, gives you much more damage per rotation, which is very important sometimes. There's also the fact that Fallen Rosemary is much more difficult to play, so the perceived gap between the two is going to be very large. But keep in mind, most of the advantage is due to the Zenyi stigmata, so you definitely need that, at least. Otherwise, Rosemary is going to outperform in proper Hands. So in general, the stronger investment option is definitely going to be Fischl if you get the Zen Yi Stigmata. Rosemary will continue to find niche use, as well as the Lobster Boss, which doesn't show up that much. Of course, it's worth discussing Eden since she is the new lightning support. In fact, there's not much to worry about with this character, and here is why. I can't predict the future, but I will give you two scenarios that are likely to play out. We have one universe where Eden is really good, and she's the next best lightning support. In this case, lightning teams would become extremely easy to build and very cost-effective. Alternatively, we have universe 2 where she underperforms all the other supports, and she's almost certainly going to outperform with her intended partner, which is Aponia. And to be honest, it doesn't actually matter which universe we live in. If you're playing on a budget, you should be skipping the guns. Typically, support weapons aren't as important as the stigmata that they come with, and because of that, there is no slick deal to chase this time around. Okay, that's pretty much all I have to say about the current supports. The damage dealers are actually less complicated. The Hirster of Thunder is now what I would consider to be a budget Valkyrie. She is now obtainable in the Battle Pass, and honestly, I would not be surprised if we got a free copy later this year. Now, the Hirster of Thunder, I can't even, like, sugarcoat it a bit. She definitely has fallen off. However, her demand in Memorial Arena is still very high, she just has very low Abyss usage. The reason for this is because a lot of her moves actually slow the Memorial Clock a lot, they don't actually slow the Abyss Clock. So what ends up happening is that even though we say her damage is low, she ends up being used a lot in Memorial despite that. And slowing down the clock like this scales really well with lower damage. To add to this, her leader skill is also still one of the best leader skills in the game. So she's still valued. Generally, since she is a budget option, I do not recommend using any crystals on her. She's really only an option for people who have already off-rated her weapon. Maybe she'll get a new weapon one day, Copium. Of course, there's also Mobius to talk about. Mobius has a passive that makes her excel against a high amount of enemies. Since her release, she's basically taken all of the lightning weathers. We've seen a few times that she can also perform outside her niche. She's very strong in Memorial as well. Obviously, in 5.7, we are going to be expecting a lot more psychic bosses. That doesn't suddenly mean that Mobius becomes a lot worse, but Mihoyo's treatment to her will be. And that pretty much finishes our conversation on the Lightning Valkyries. I won't be discussing the new Valkyrie for obvious reasons. She'll definitely get the best treatment from Mihoyo. So obviously if you want to build a Lightning team right now, then you might want to think about that patch. Lastly, of course, we have Ice Teams. Now Ice Teams are the most unique. Let's just get right into it, shall we? The new cat girl Felis is the new Ice support. The biggest problem with Ice Teams were SP management and ultimate cooldowns. This cat definitely solves both. So Ice Teams in general have become a lot better with Pardo Felis. She doesn't seem to work very well with the your Imperia because her long animations do not have time stop, and you can't sequence the buffs to get a full duration on your main DPS, which is not a problem with Haxer Bunny. Anyway, that is besides the point. If you are looking to invest into an Ice Team, the best course of action is actually to pull on the 30 guarantee that's coming up. It's pretty much going to be the only time you can get her set for cheap. Yeah, you can definitely skip it, but in that case, you're probably building another team, not the Ice Team. Now let's talk about Haxer Bunny. Obviously, as of right now, used in pretty much every Ice Team. Really only used in Abyss, but very strong there. Haxer Bunny is probably the easiest Valkyrie in the entire game. In fact, if you are a casual player, you might want to get her sooner rather than later. She makes it so you don't have to do rotations at all, and basically, you get free damage for elemental teams. Now that being said, that does rely on Turgenev, and Turgenev is probably the best stigmata in the entire game. It's a very strong stigmata that can be used in pretty much any elemental team, so a very cost-effective Valkyrie to gear up, as it'll strengthen your entire account. And that pretty much does it for the discussion on the support Valkyries. Since Turgenev is just widely desired, most veterans actually already have Haxer Bunny geared up. Likely what will separate a good and a great team is the Bastid supply that's coming up. Now let's move on to the discussion to the DPSs. First, the budget option is the Hersha Reason. 
She's pretty much gotten no love for an entire year, but now just recently she's gotten some buffs. So very likely in version 5.6 we'll be able to see her shine again, not only because she's been brought up by Felis, but because Huodo will likely return from his year-long slumber. So in general, HOR is basically a free Valkyrie. By doing Elysian Realm, you'll be able to get to S2 for free. That is basically her biggest damage checkpoint, so you don't even need to go higher than that. Also, her weapon is next to be put into the exchange shop, so really there's no reason to spend crystals on her. Her damage is pretty close to the others and will definitely be effective for Red Lotus Abyss. So Silverwing is probably the favored ice damage dealer right now. She also functions as a ranged character, so she is very effective on the ranged weather. So among all the ice damage dealers, she definitely has the highest raw damage output. So because of that, she is the premium option for the ice damage dealer. However, the difference between her and the other ice damage dealers is definitely exaggerated. On top of just having a generally easier time scoring, Bosses tend to like her typing or just straight up her mechanics, such as Asaka's shield or Benares' flying. The other thing to keep in mind is that her memorial usage is just strictly lower than all of the other elemental teams, so really you're only pulling her for either ice weather or the ranged weather. Definitely something to keep in mind. Next we have Nyx, who is the best quantum type in the game so far. Now that doesn't actually mean very much because we literally only have one quantum boss. Also, very similar to Mobius, she scales on the amount of enemies that there are. And so there are times where she might actually pull ahead because of that. A few bosses are designed with multiple mobs in mind, such as Helmaru and Homu, and depending on the disturbance checkpoint, she might actually be the best option. But Nyx is probably the most questionable because she has terrible memorial coverage, and to be honest, they don't actually run her bosses very much, so I really don't think she is justified other than for people who want to retain every single weather in Nirvana Abyss, and to be honest, that's pretty much no one who needs this video. And that pretty much covers our discussion of the ice teams. Overall, the damage dealers are a little bit underwhelming. If you don't have any of the damage dealers raised up, I would personally suggest for you to just wait for a new one to pop up. Just get Turgenev, basically. So as a reminder, I do recommend finishing one type of team. That could be physical, ice, fire, or lightning. Another reason why I strongly recommend this is because using scuffed gear is not easy. It takes a lot of skill and knowledge. And a fully geared team can also go outside of its niche, so it can just generally be used. And you'll be much better off than if you just had fragmented pieces everywhere not knowing what you're doing. Also, I didn't really discuss Ancient Legacy Valkyries, so let's do that really quickly. As of right now, we don't really have very many Ancient Legacy Valkyries, so it is possible to farm both Alicia and Fallen Rosemary. If you can do that, I do recommend doing it, but if you can't, then uh, I think the focus should be on Rosemary first. Celestial Hymn is fantastic for Memorial Arena, so if you do care about that, you can prioritize unlocking her, but there have been so many events where you can get her for free. So honestly, I wouldn't really worry about it. And because she's not really rank dependent, it's good if you just unlock her. Okay guys, that pretty much does it. Leave any questions that you have, and I'll see you guys in six months.